welcome to episode 80. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and you're listening to Who Did That Voice, where we take an in-depth look at voiceovers. Ready to take a vacay, but you just don't have the time to plan? Let the agents at 3D Travel Company pamper you and take care of all the little details. Find us at www.whodidthatvoice.co and click the Book Now button on the left-hand side. For a limited time, Who Did That Voice listeners can receive a Disney gift card for qualifying Disney and Universal trips, booked and traveled by 2017. Hurry and book today so you can travel away. Welcome to Who Did That Voice, the show where we take an in-depth look at voiceover. And now, here's your host, Trenton Larkin. Hey everyone, just wanted to let you know we have launched a Patreon page. You can find us at www.patreon.com forward slash who did that voice. What is Patreon, you say? Well, it's a lot like a Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign that allows you to help support us on a monthly basis. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help support the show and earn amazing perks. Help us out today and join the Who Did That Voice family in a new way. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. Today's special guest is best known for voicing Wonder Woman on Super Friends. Hi, Wonder Woman. I thought I heard your jet. I hear you're trying to come up with a fun class project. Yeah, got any ideas? A dandy one. I'll show you how to make what I call a spinning pencil top. Sounds great. What materials do we need? An empty coffee can, some cardboard, some colored marking pens, and a small pencil. Now, trace a circle on the cardboard, and in a few minutes, I'll show you how to complete your spinning pencil top. Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Who Did That Voice? Today on the show, I have Shannon Farnan joining us. Shannon, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Oh, thank you for inviting me. <laughs> well, it is my honor, ma'am. Uh, you know, we want to talk about some amazing things that you've been a part of in your acting career. But the very first thing that I love to do when I have a guest on my show is just to get to know them. And I want to know about Shannon Farnan, the little girl that grew up into the woman and the actress, uh, and more specifically, the voice actress that you became. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, I started out in a family of entertainers, so it was sort of all taken for granted. I mean, when <laughs> I was still being picked up and carried around, I was meeting Frank Sinatra and Tony Bennett and wow. <laughs> everybody because my father was a uh, orchestra leader that was always working. So, oh, wow. I, you know, we had all the lessons, all the kids had all the lessons, we didn't, any lesson we wanted, we got. We were fortunate. Um, that depends on how you look at it. People, <laughs> people frown, often frown on the entertainment industry. And of course, way back when, an actor was considered a pariah. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> so I, it was just a natural for me. I was totally prepared. And then I uh, actually wanted to be a classical pianist until I was about 15 and found the drama department and uh, switched on over very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Well, how did you get into the acting industry initially? Once you found the drama department, what were some of the first things that you kind of got involved in? I was very fortunate. I said to my, I was working as a security receptionist at Rocketdyne, and then I was working, and I'm talking in my early 20s, then I was working as a modeling teacher and a professional makeup teacher for an outfit called Carol and Leonetti Limited. And I just realized, by the way, she married, she did all right for herself. She married Howard Amundsen, so oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> she, she she did quite well. Anyway, yeah, I realized I really am an actress, and that's where I should be headed. So I said to my mom, "Look, I'd like to just quit this job, get an agent, and if I can't <laughs> pay you back for the photographs that I have to have taken, then I'll go back to work. Yeah, I'll get another job." So it was a deal, and I got an agent right away and paid her back within four months and, and never looked back. So I worked <laughs> an awful, awful lot. My, the bulk of my income was truly commercial work. Oh, wow. Typical all-American girl. Um, I was a spokeswoman very early in it, uh, and it just went from there. And, and then I always had the plan, I guess, the mental plan of working as much as I could in the industry in all of the arenas. 
you know, I didn't have the, oh, God, I want to be a star thing. Because you kind of look around and, you know, a lot of stars have about 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I immediately made myself available. I did industrial films. I even did trade shows where you'd go down and introduce a product. I uh, wound up doing uh, looping. I've looped voices for entire series. There was a, a series not too terribly long ago called First Monday. And it was with um, James Garner and um, Charles Durning. And it was about the Supreme Court. And one of the nicest women, an actress that was playing one of the justices, wound up having a a very difficult speech difficulty because of a thing called spasmodic dysphonia. Oh, wow. So I looped her entire 13 weeks. I mean, every sound she made. So I got into that. I did um, print work. I've done a lot of print work, advertising with photographs for different products. You know, uh, I don't know what else just, to tell you. Just a very vast career, which is amazing, you know, that you were able to really get into all those different facets. Because some people aren't aren't blessed enough to uh, have that opportunity to really get their feet wet in all the different areas, you know. I, I was, and I just, uh, it was just a lot of fun. I enjoyed the work. I always felt prepared. And then never expecting to do any animation. That was not even in my extended thought <laughs> <laughs> absolutely but but I, I happened to work with a director who recently passed away i'm sorry to say and i worked with him on camera and one day i just got a call that my agent said they'd like to see you at hanna barbera to audition for the role of wonder woman and i thought they were just playing with me <laughs> <laughs> so i said you're kidding well i'd be happy to do that and so i went on the audition and uh, sure enough, the network bought it, and everybody bought it, and uh, I did the role for 10 years. Well, that is super fantastic. And, you know, Shannon, uh, talking about Wonder Woman, her first initial appearance was on a, a brief episode of an animated series called The Brady Kids, which was a, a spawn off of The Brady Bunch. Um, and uh, Jane Webb voiced her in that initial episode or two. But you were the official voice of the first series long running uh, Wonder Woman. So yes. really the initial first voice uh, when it came to a DC entity, uh, you know, with Challenge of the Super Friends and Super Friends, uh, the all new Super Friends Hour, as some know it, and the world's greatest Super Friends. And you played that character from 1973 to 1983, which is, is amazing that you got to do it for 10 years. <laughs> I did. It was a real pleasure. Uh, and truthfully, the cast, we weren't booked for 10 years. They would call us every spring, I think it was, or or maybe early spring, yeah. and say, uh, we'd like you to come in to do um, Super Friends. <laughs> but you never <laughs> knew from year to year that you were going to be doing that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it, that, you know, that was just what we call another gig along the way. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Well, it is fantastic that you were able to be called back all those years to continue that role and uh, to be able to voice her. You know, and like you said, you didn't know that was going to happen, but the fact that it did, it's super special. It is super special. And now <laughs> I, last couple of years, I started appearing at our comic conventions. And it's just awesome how the fans um, respond. It's just awesome. Well, Shannon, it sounds really amazing that you've been able to get out to the cons lately and uh, to meet the fans. And I'm so glad that the reception that they have given you has truly been uh, worthy of the uh, the career that you've had and the legacy that you've left, especially for Wonder Woman, along with all the other wonderful things you've been a part of over the years. Um, and I'm so glad that the fans have been reacting so uh, amazingly towards you and to be able to uh, just share their admiration and their love for the character with you. And you know it's been fun meeting other people who have done the voice as well. This has been a fun <laughs> little journey. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not doing these constantly, but it, it's a, that's part of the fun stuff is getting to know some of the people that uh, also were in the animation business. So. Oh, oh, I'm sure it is. Yeah, getting to meet the other people that are carrying on the legacy that you kind of initially yeah. started over those last 10 yeah. years. Yeah, amazing. Absolutely. <laughs> well, besides uh, Wonder Woman, this, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say Susan Eisenberg and I, she has also done Wonder Woman, yes. have been on panels panels together, and we've had a great time. 
Oh, that is fantastic. And I have I have always been a fan of Susan's as well from her Justice League and Justice League Unlimited right. series. Uh, she has been a woman that uh, really brought some amazing aspects to the character as well as it kind of evolved in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, right. And she's really kind of relaunched the character for a new generation. And, uh, uh, you know, but it's great to go back to the roots of a character and speak with you because you were the essence of what everyone built wonder woman off of for those 10 years um you know and i'm sure even you're very welcome you know i'm sure even susan uh would admit that uh she probably got a lot of her inspiration from your character initially so well that would be sweet but um (laughs) you know wonder wonder woman has a has a life all of her own and i'm proud to have uh i'm proud to have been um the one who uh started it all (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> absolutely absolutely well besides wonder woman which is an amazing character and i'm a super big fan of super friends and batman and all of the characters that make up the uh the wonderful super friends um you've been a part of some amazing tv shows like the man from uncle my favorite martian emergency and one of my absolute favorites of all time is i dream of genie can you tell us a little bit about what it was like <laughs> to be on that wonderful show i was on that show twice and uh certainly was different. Larry Hagman uh, and I worked together uh, in both cases, both shows. <laughs> One of them, I was his uh, girlfriend, which Jeannie was not happy with. But <laughs> I, we, we were in a boat in the water. I mean, all day long when you shoot, you're just doing these scenes, you know, from every aspect, etc., every angle. And yeah. we were in the boat together all day long and really kind of got to know each other. And he was a character, an absolute character. Um, ra- rather colorful language <laughs> an awful lot of the time. That's funny. But we wound up, uh, I, uh, my husband and I wound up buying his car and his tent trailer. <laughs> and uh, wow. I, I had very young children then, and we would go uh, uh, camping with that. So that was fun. Oh, wow. What what a special thing. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. is so fun. And when you say a tent trailer, I'm thinking, wow, that is definitely retro. <laughs> <laughs> it's retro. But you know, that thing was so compact. It was just a fabulous uh, setup. Fantastic. Just Wonderful. Yeah. Well, Shannon, you know, one of the things I've always wanted to at, you know, ask you is what kind of advice would you give to someone who might look at uh, getting into this crazy world of acting and voice acting? Oh, well. Two things. Never be afraid to make a fool of yourself. (laughs) And if you don't like rejection, find another job. That's good advice. (laughs) Because that both of those things are vital. I've, I have seen so many people drop out of this because they didn't get a particular job that their emotional level took it very personal. And that's the absolute worst thing you can do. And Strangely enough, like the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, be prepared. You have to be prepared. You just don't start. And, you know, certainly in the voice department, you have got to be prepared. There's voices are a dime a dozen. I mean, it's a stroke of luck, really, to, <laughs> to get a job in the voice, depart- in the voice uh, field, especially for women. Um, it's a kind of been a man's world in, in this business period. I mean, we'll all have to admit to that. But men's voices are used more than women's voices. Yeah. And that's just the way it's always been. So do the best you can and, and stay the course if you really love what you're doing. And it probably wouldn't hurt to go to college and get a backup job. <laughs> <laughs> just to have something back on the back burner, huh? Well, of course. Uh, Absolutely. You know, and and the world is changing. Uh, there was a time when you chose a profession and you retired from that profession with a gold watch. Yeah. And that was success. That is no longer true. Yeah, absolutely. You should go for as many interests as you have. Do it and then go ahead and be brave enough to change. I've heard so many people say, oh, my God, I would love to be a wish I had been a vet. And, you know, they're 40. I said, well, go to school, become a vet, and you've got another 30 years to, pro- to be in the profession. Yeah. They don't, they don't think that it's okay to change what you're doing. Well, I mean, so that's, 
And I important. think you're right with that. I think you're absolutely right, Shane. And people don't feel that they have the ability to go and change what they're doing because everyone still has that mentality of, hey, I'm with this job. I should stick with them till the end. But sometimes, yes. sometimes yes. the jobs don't stick with you till the end. Even if your intention That's is to be right. with them for 30 years, they may let you go tomorrow. And then what oh, do you do? Happens. You know? so, it happens all the time. It usually happens in your 26th year. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> you so let bad. go and you don't get that retirement. You know, it's, Yeah. Yeah, you it's really, really have sad. to follow your passions, follow your passions, whatever they are. But you better have a passion for acting, because <laughs> if you don't, it will be much too hard on you. Wow. I really appreciate your advice, Shane, and I think it's extremely solid and uh, very valid uh, points that you made for sure. You know, how, what kind of inspirations would you sh say you had in your life, Shannon? Um, were there certain actors or singers or uh, family members that maybe kind of inspired you to become an actress? Or was it just kind of the outside sources of discovering the drama department and those kind of things? Well, my family, of course, growing up in a family that was already successful in the business showed you what it took to do it in the sense of being prepared and doing the work and yeah. <clears throat> practicing and staying with it. And, and in my, the case of my mother vocalizing all the time. And in the case of my father, always at the piano doing arranging for the, I mean, it was, you developed a worth, a work ethic. Yeah. So that of course was a good start. Of course, as a child, you know, I, there were so many wonderful I was a, loved going to the movies, as we all do. Absolutely. And there were so many wonderful, wonderful actresses and actors to, to inspire one. I mean, certainly Ingrid Bergman oh, yeah. was an inspiration to me. Some movies were inspirations to me. The Red Shoes as a child. Of course, I took dance classes my whole life. <laughs> but The Red Shoes as a child this is an inspirational movie. Um, Good heavens, and, the, and actors after that that just you know blow you away. Of course, I'm a huge fan of the BBC and PBS. Oh, me so too. that will tell yeah. you the kind of actors that inspire me. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> definitely, yeah, classical and I, trained. I will say and, yeah. the, uh, the, yes, I, there's something about the background of an actor as opposed to certain different methods of acting. Yeah, which frankly, frankly, are a little. What's the word for that? There is no one way to be an actor. Yeah. There really isn't. You either are going to be believable at what you do or you're not. And how you get there is truly totally unimportant. I mean, I love Robert Mitchum's line. <laughs> I, just, I show up, I don't trip over the furniture, and, you know, this is what I do. <laughs> but but, but, but he, he was a wonderful person. And most of the time, an actor that's very successful becomes, at least an American actor, and this is not true at all about other uh, areas like England and, and Canada. But in America, people tend to take an actor and use him as a certain type forever and ever. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a blessed actor who gets to truly change in a different role all the time. Yeah, somebody who's versatile and able to really expand their acting abilities. Yeah. And not just, you know, everyone might, I mean, the people may have those abilities, but that doesn't mean that the people that hire them want to see them doing anything else. True. Yeah, they absolutely. Just, especially in television. I mean, that was, you know, if you, if you were uh, doing a series, you were doing usually you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The carrot and you know, like the Robert Wagners and the the David Jansons and the Gene Berries, they they did themselves all the time and never had an opportunity to stretch out from there. Yeah, kind of limited. But sometimes, mm -hmm. unfortunately, that's how the business goes, you know. But uh, well, it is. You know, yeah. at least they had a career that was long lasting. You know. <laughs> Well, Shannon, do you have a way for people to reach out to you, social media, a website, or how can people get I in do. touch with you? I, I used to have a website, but it got too expensive to clean up after the hackers. Oh, I understand. So I no longer, I no longer do that. But uh, you can reach me on Facebook, Shannon Farnan. And um, I'm on Twitter, at Shannon Farnan, WW. Fantastic. So people can reach out to you, whether they're fans or looking to maybe hire you for a project as uh, some character. <laughs>
Yeah, actually, especially if they're looking to hire me as a project. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, Shannon, I just have one final question for you today, and we will wrap this interview up. And the question is, what is the legacy that you want to leave behind? Oh, for all women, that's an easy one. What Wonder Woman stands for is truth and justice, world goodwill, and truly nonviolence. Now, I don't know how long that's going to keep up, but... <laughs> that is how she was developed. That is how she was written. And the world needs more Wonder Women. But Wonder Woman stands for wonderful things. And let's, let's shine, ladies. Let's shine. Wow. What a beautiful sentiment. Shannon, it's been an absolute honor and pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you so much. And uh, all good things come to you. Well, Shannon, it has been an absolute honor and pleasure having you on the show today. Would you please give us a closeout as Wonder Woman? Great Hera, Superman, I'm on my way to the Hall of Justice in my invisible plane. This has been Shannon Farnan, and I did the voice of Wonder Woman. Who did that voice? Well, everyone, I sure hope you enjoyed today's episode with Shannon Farnan, the voice of Wonder Woman. And if you did, please find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram by searching Who Did That Voice. I would love to hear from you. You know, a question you might ask yourself is, where can I listen to Who Did That Voice? That's an excellent question. You can hear us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, YouTube, and our website at www.whodidthatvoice.co. Click the Episodes tab and listen away. Well, everyone, that's all the time we have for this episode. Join us this Friday for our next special guest, Ivan Sherry, the voice of Inspector Gadget from the 2015 series. You won't want to miss this episode. Hey, do you ask yourself who did that voice? Well, if you do, go to our website, www.whodidthatvoice.co, and click on the Episodes tab. Choose an actor, pick their name, and see pictures from the different characters they've voiced in their career. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time for more discoveries on Who Did That Voice.